pioneering methods like high strain dynamic testing integrity testing sonic logging etc for pile foundation in india has been his contribution two decades ago his work has resulted in various sectors as uh, uh, in the methods being adopted by bodies including metro rails highways uh, railways and most bodies i think he has also been involved uh, for conducting uh, this type of testing in the eastern part in kolkata also uh, jointly with dr jay kumar shukla he has introduced and successfully demonstrated bidirectional load testing for large capacity piles which is yet another milestone for the country thermal integrity profiling and instrumentation have been his other contributions he has done lot of works uh, he has worked on almost all the prestigious projects in the country and in more than 20 countries worldwide including southeast asia africa middle east and the gulf he has written various technical papers on the subject he is the author he, he is the author prized trainer of these technologies worldwide today he has been awarded the prestigious dinesh mohan award of excellence in the professional practice for the year 2018 2019 by indian geotechnical society he is the national executive committee member of igs and on the air irc and bis subcommittee to form guidelines for pile foundation testing and is a member of various professional bodies He has done his masters in structural engineering from MS University of Baroda in 1994. He is also uh, he is also a half marathon runner and national table tennis player in seniors category. So with this uh, brief introduction, may I request Mr. Ramy Kiran Boydo to deliver his theme lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, without losing time uh, i start uh, uh, sharing I think it's all right. Are you able to see the screen, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, uh, thank you uh, once again for the introduction, and uh, I'll try to quickly run through this uh, rock anchors for static pile load testing considerations and case studies. We will look at uh, uh, some of the case studies. We will look at some of the code provisions, including some of the uh, ways you could install or design them, and then use them uh, during testing. so uh, the topic consists of design philosophy considerations for installation of rock anchors case studies and concluding remarks now we all know that vertical load tests um, vertical load tests are commonly conducted to assess the design and the ultimate loads and to verify the design and these load tests uh, for example in rock could be uh, conducted using kentledge or reaction piles or currently we see a uh, wide use of uh, rock anchors or rock socketed piles so of course where we know that rock is present at shallow depth or at reasonable depths then uh, and especially with the capacity is increasing kentledge gets ruled out so we are left with installing reaction piles or you could use rock anchors and these are done by installing uh, smaller diameter rock anchors like 150 mm or 200 mm and using hd straps now when you use rock anchors the benefit is like a reaction pile where you need to wait for 28 days here you could do it speedier because it depends on the strength of grout and probably you could do it in 2 weeks 
time instead of 28 days of the installation. Installation is faster and rapid and it's suitable for heavy loads. And so that's one of the benefits of the rock anchors. Now, again, space, where you, space is a constraint, the rock anchor drilling rigs are quite compact. So to use them, the space is a constraint. So although there are significant benefits, uh, we do hear once in a while that the anchors gave away or the rock anchor failed or there was a slippage or whatever. So, so that means uh, you need to be careful in design and construction if you want to achieve uh, good results. Uh, so typically, when we talk of design philosophy of rock anchors, they are uh, generally uh, what we see commonly is 150 mm or 200 mm diameter uh, rock anchors installed using temporary or permanent casings depending on the type of soil. Uh, the bits also depend uh, based on the type of strata. You could have a diamond coring bit or you could have a uh, slightly different bit depending on whether you have boulders or whether you have uh, fresh rock. And uh, once you drill through, you insert HP strands. Uh, and then put some spacer plates and then put grout inside those uh, 150 or 200 mm cavities. Uh, in some cases, for large capacities, we have also seen 300 mm diameter uh, rock anchors or what you could also say as micro piles. Now, when we talk of rock anchors, we have a free length of rock anchor and a fixed length of rock anchor. So typically, the free length is provided because if you have loose material in the top zone, you don't want any capacity or any capacity from that area. And that is why you would have that area, uh, length of the rock anchor as free. And typically, the fixed length would start from a good uh, straight up or where the rock quality is uh, good. So that is how you have a free length and a fixed length. Now again, uh, if you look at reaction piles, uh, the reaction pile has to be installed at a distance equal to three times the diameter of the test pile, center to center distance. Whereas with rock anchors, uh, you have an advantage, you install it at two times the pile diameters from the edge of the pile. So it's typically like 2.5 times instead of three times. So two times the pile diameters from the edge of the pile subject to a minimum of 1.5 meter from the edge. Again, when you install HT strands, so HT strands, uh, for example, a 15.2 meter diameter HT strand would have an ultimate strength of something like 25 or 26. You can come in the square, but you typically use 70% of the ultimate strength of the strand, so which is uh, something like 18 newton per uh, millimeter square. Uh, then again, the fixed length of the anchor shall be decided after several checks. So that now, when we talk of a rock anchor, there are three areas that we need to look at. One area is the bond between the uh, HT strand and the ground. Okay, so you don't want the bond to break. Typically, second area is the bond between the uh, grout and the rock. So there's a bond between the grout and the rock. And the second is the shear strength of the rock itself. So for example, when you apply a load, the anchor is in uplift. And you don't want a situation where the entire rock mass or the chunk comes out of it. So, so you will design a rock anchor applying these three checks. Now, the bond strength between the grout and the rock shall be checked uh, uh, basically uh, on the basis of UCS values, provided UCS values are available. And then you could look at IS10270, which provides a table, and then you can uh, get the bond strength between the grout and rock. So there is a table which is provided uh, in the code. Uh, so typically, uh, if you look at the bond between the grout and the strand, um, that's uh, generally much stronger and that is not a governing factor. So a check, uh, however, as a rule, you try to check the bond strength between the grout and the anchor before you finalize the uh, design. Then again, uh, to ensure that uh, your rock mass is also uh, uh, sufficient enough when you apply a pull-out load. So what we say is that if you want to check, you could typically check one of the anchors by applying a pull-out load. Or uh, you should also check the weight of the sheared rock mass shall be more than the uplift force. And at least a factor of safety of 1.525 is preferable for uh, temporary anch uh, anchors. Now, again, when you want to use uh, uh, compute the rock mass, you have two options based on the type of rock. 
one could be a highly weathered rock in which case you use a 60 degree apex angle and other could be 90 degree for a moderately to slightly weathered rock or better quality rock so if you are using 60 degree then obviously you go deeper so the rock anchors are longer uh, again uh, while selecting the apex of rock wedge which shall be typically so the so it is at the midpoint so when you select 60 degree your wedge is formed at the midpoint unless you use a base plate at the bottom again when we talk of such situations there is limited data on what happens when you use a base plate so that's what the course says but there's limited data when we say use a base plate so most designs will be based on 60 degree and 90 degree uh, theories and then uh, assuming that uh, the wedge is formed at the midpoint along the fixed length again look at the group action so if your anchors are very close by uh, the rock mass may uh, overlap so then you are looking at the total rock mass and not individual rock mass so uh, with rock anchors what we generally say is you would want to be slightly conservative because say for example you are doing a 2000 ton load test and you have eight rock anchors and even if one malfunctions the entire test cannot be completed so you would typically want to be conservative uh, and put all the checks in place before you complete the design so generally what we have seen is if adequate precautions are taken during designing uh, then you also allow for some construction deficiencies and then there are less chances of failure uh, during the test. So that's what was a broad brief on the uh, uh, design. Now let's look at some of the installation part of it. So uh, obviously the anchor shall be free from dirt or any uh, foreign material. Uh, suitable spacer shall be provided. So you want spacers at every depth along the length of the anchor so that the wires don't get bundled up. The wires are uh, separate. And then apply some coats of epoxy and some guards or sand to increase the bond so that there is a good bond between the uh, grout and the strands. Uh, again, uh, to insert the grout into the uh, anchor, we typically use a tube and then allow it uh, to move under gravity, unlike a pile where you use a trimmy. So ensure that there are no air bubbles when you do the grouting. So you don't pull out the tube uh, at the time of grouting and allow some foreign material or something to the place. And then uh, ensure that it is grouted only for the fixed length. So if you keep on grouting and you uh, end up uh, grouting your free length as well, then you have a problem because then your anchor probably might fail uh, at much lower depths, even if you are going for the entire depth. So that is something is a must. Now, how do you check that? Would be by putting a tube or putting some kind of a rod or a measurement to ensure that your free length and fixed length are reasonably there. So, of course, once you complete your uh, rocket installation, depending on the type of material you use, you could test it after three days or seven days. So, for example, if you use something like GP2 and you get strength even after 48 hours, but for uh, conservatism, you might test after three to seven days. These are some of the pictures, and this is what the drilling is in progress. These are the strands with a cone at the bottom so that they are bundled and then separated at the top, anchors being lowered, and this is how you pull your grout and uh, these are the strands and now this is erection being done and uh, getting them uh, ready for stressing. I hope you are able to see my cursor as well. Now, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, some yeah, of the yeah, case yeah, studies. Yeah, uh, sorry, are you able to see my cursor? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes, so, yes. so, let us look at some of the case studies. Uh, rock anchors have been installed in a variety of rocks like basalt, granite, shale, limestone, covering an entire range of soundness. So, we have some case studies here. Um, at, uh, for example, uh, in this particular case, uh, at a project site in Nagpur, uh, the borelock uh, indicated weathered basalt uh, underlain by weathered sandstone and sandstone was underlain by knees. So, um, uh, because UCS values were not available, uh, it was a challenge. So, what we did was we used the SPT values uh, to, to uh, design the rock anchors. I'm sorry, I tried to put the borelock, but I think a picture is not very clear. But what we wanted to highlight was we really did not have UCS values uh, in this case. Uh, so what we did was we used SPTs, and if I look at the formation, the RQD was nil, 
the core recovery was only from 3% to 10% and uh, SPTs indicated uh, refusal because it was more than 100. So uh, we use uh, the table, uh, uh, so we use the table in IRC and we use uh, IS 10270 and the fixed length was estimated to be uh, 10 meters. Uh, so uh, the test load was 750 tons and if I divide it by four, so we considered four rock anchors. So in this case, our working load on each of the anchor was around 188 tons. And uh, as I said, we also used the IRC 78 Appendix 5 and whatever was conservative out of the both, we considered that. And after we used the IRC 78, what we found was the fixed length now is 14 meters, uh, which was higher than the uh, normal guidelines of the British Corps. So what the British Corps says is that generally the fixed length of rock anchors, it recommends, I mean previously it did not allow you to increase length more, more than 10 meters, but they have made a recent amendment and now they have said that we recommend that it should not be more than 10 meters. So what we had was 14 meters and uh, uh, we prevailed upon the engineer and we said that let us uh, do this test and let us see how it works. Uh, looking to the strata, I think we should scrape through, but uh, let's have a look at the test. So because there's no comment in the Indian courts on the fixed length and the free length, so that's something which we need to look at. And we did this vertical load test by installing of rock anchors you could see here but i have not put the load test curve uh, for the sake of simplicity but the pile took the load the anchors withstood the load and it was a successful test if i remember correctly dr kumar Bichumani was the uh, consultant from AECOM. so that was successful so for the metro project in nagpur uh, this was another test with a load of 1900 tons and again uh, we had very poor rock uh, so there was no ucs values no point load test uh, index test and we used the spts uh, so uh, and what we got was a fixed length of 24 meters which was uh, really very high and we were uh, worried uh, with uh, 24 meters uh, do we expect a wedge failure and do we expect that the anchors will malfunction but uh, we went through this test uh, we had eight rock anchors so each one with 200 tons uh, 250 tons uh, to come to ensure that we got 1900 tons of load so again uh, this was a similar case but uh, due to space constraints instead of uh, using uh, conventional flat girders uh, we used uh, a crown which you might see in the recent time so this was one of the first uh, usages of crowns and uh, when you talk of a crown uh, your anchors are not vertical uh, typically they are inclined at 15 degrees and that means your specification which mentions that uh, the anchor should be uh, two times away from the edge of the pile in this case they should be two times away from the edge of the pile at the starting point of the fixed length of the pile uh, fixed length of the anchor sorry so if your fixed length of the anchor is starting at eight meters from the top then at eight meters the anchor should be two times uh, away two times of the pile diameter. So that's what uh, the specification says, and that's what we use in this uh, current case. What we also found was inclined rock anchor installation is challenging because you need to maintain a degree, 15 degrees. And if there is a deviation in that, then obviously there are some stresses which are introduced into the wire, and those wires will not easily go into the crown. So again, when you're going inclined, you're cutting through the ground. So in an inclined direction. So if there is an underground utility, that is another risk. So employing skilled drillers was very critical. Uh, we achieved that and uh, the rock anchors were successfully installed after dealing with all the challenges and the test was uh, successfully completed. And this was the setup. Now you could see here, you could see that this is the alignment and the anchor is slightly off center. So that's uh, one of the problems what we are because no matter how hard you try, once in a while the dr drilling rig moves uh, out of position or out of plumb and then you don't have uh, exact 15 degrees in some cases, you don't have the exact alignment in some cases. I mean, good, it works. But still it works for rock anchors because rock anchors you have a large capacity and there are inherent factor of safety. Uh, what we are always worried is with soil anchors because soil anchors have much lesser capacities and uh, if one anchor comes out then it's a challenge. So 
somehow we have been reluctant to use it uh, for uh, soil anchors, although we still go ahead with uh, uh, rock anchors uh, with the crown method. So let's look at the third case study. Uh, this was a project site in Mumbai and a 23 meter long test pile uh, having a diameter of 1 meter. Uh, design load was 785 tons and test load was 1962 tons. And uh, this was a reasonably good rock. So we had eight rock anchors were planted again 250 tons each. And this was the arrangement. So we had uh, two here, two here, two here. And then after we designed the eight rock anchors and we were almost ready for the test, uh, our calculations based on the geotechnical profile, which was uh, highly weathered brescia and uh, with RQDs typically around 70. So we had a reasonably good rock, with, uh, a reasonable UCS values. Our free length was 12.5 meter and a fixed length was 16.5 meter, which was considered long by the consultant to that project. So uh, once we submitted the design for verification, he came up with the British code and he insisted that uh, this is long and either you reduce the load on the anchor and the only way you could do that was by installing additional rock anchors instead of the plant eight. So now uh, we had to re go back to the design board. We modified the girder and now we had one anchor each so that the uh, uh, center of gravity, I mean the center is maintained. So now instead of eight rock anchors, we ended up with 12 rock anchors uh, for, this, uh, for this particular case. Uh, so we had additional four as we as I mentioned and then uh, the original design of 1962 divided by eight was 245 tons with four additional anchors now the load on each anchor was 163 tons so we had fair amount of margin so eventually the test was uh, completed successfully and everyone was satisfied with 12 anchors but we were not convinced we thought let us do some r d and let us check what happens if eight anchors were used as originally planned or let us see even with four anchors what happens so what we did was we disconnected eight anchors out of the 12 anchors we redid the test and with four anchors we reduced the load so we said okay 245 tons into four that would be something like thousand tons but i have a 1.25 uh, factor of safety so uh, let me try and load it to 300 tons on each anchor. So when I used it with 300 tons and it was still successful. So what we could see was with the three case studies that uh, uh, in spite of the coral provisions, we ended up with slightly extra length of anchors and uh, we uh, fortunately uh, we did not face uh, any problems. So, so the, what we would say is that the British code uh, uh, coming from a point where they said that you cannot use more than 10 meters and now they say that it's a general guideline that uh, you might prefer to use it up to 10 meters and what it means is that there is still uh, sufficient data is not available and it means there is a lot of data that is required to see if we could increase the fixed length of the uh, anchors. So this was the setup in Mumbai with 12 rock anchors. You could see here these two here and then the third one off center uh, between the two anchors. So we modified the girders and everything. So the biggest challenge and the most common issue associated with installation of rock anchors is subsurface conditions are different than depicted in the bore lock. So what happens is you design it based on a particular bore lock and then uh, when you go and start drilling on site and then you experience an entirely different uh, situation. So a good geotechnical practices, good soil investigation probably should help in reduce uh, one of the problems. The other problems is changing topography. I mean, you have a good soil investigation, but in uh, let us say, for example, uh, let's look at this case study. Uh, the bore lock indicated presence of hard basalt rock, and hence the rock anchors were uh, designed accordingly uh, based on the closest borehole. However, while actual field work, brescia was encountered instead of basalt. So the field work was halted, and the issue was escalated and everybody agreed that it was presence of brescia more than the actual uh, field conditions however uh, when we uh, looked at the borelock for the adjoining pier for this metro project which was further away so the nearest pier indicated uh, uh, nearest pier indicated basalt but an away pier indicated brescia and that 